Hello, I'm Isai Jess Munoz, Associate Professor of Voice and Opera at the University of Delaware and Chair of the National Opera Association's Sacred in Opera Initiative. I'm honored to have been invited to serve as this week's host of our Nat's weekly series, A Word and a Song. Along with each of you, I've been witnessing and celebrating how many artists are demonstrating responsiveness and inspiration in overcoming the significant impact COVID-19 has made on our field. It's caused me to ponder and reflect on how acts of beauty can be seen even in times of crisis, and also on how times of distress often inform our sense of the aesthetic. I've heard other artists echoing how these times of uncertainty can produce the raw material for social movements and even works of art that later are hailed as beautiful masterpieces. Which option then for the artist is more morally responsible when confronting horrific events in our world? Is it to make the most thoughtful, beautiful, felt artwork one can? Or is it to insist that no art should be made at all? History has shown us that something is birthed from our artistic compulsions to look and record, to contemplate even as we're mourning. Creating can be our attempt to understand, to make peace, to make a positive difference. I came across a message from Nat's former president, Clifford Torin, who in an exhortation to Nat's constituents in 1957, commented on how inherent in all our artistic journeys are troubled times, where there can be the frustration of seeing one's hopes and hard work halted or not fully realized. He writes, this is the point where it is easy to capitulate, where it seems wise and profitable to lower standards and accept a lesser degree of perfection when it is easier to say, what is the use? And to tolerate things of lesser value and beauty. But President Torin then goes on to say that the true artist, the beauty seeker, has the power to live in a realm of ever expanding vistas, where he is not only bound by the present state, but he draws on what he has already experienced to gain understanding of that which still lies beyond the known and the present, to shed light on the transcendent values of beauty with an awareness that the presence and realization of the beautiful can be one of the most effective solutions to our world problems. A little over 12 years ago, I encountered a historical example of beauty emerging from crisis and this encounter with the beautiful irrevocably changed the trajectory of my career. Much of my work as a recitalist focuses on disseminating the music of Iberian and Latin American composers. And in 2008, I had traveled to Barcelona to perform initial research on a recital program. And that's when I realized how very little scholarly attention has been placed on the classical songs of Catalonia the autonomous community in Spain, the repressive and still resonating effects of Francisco Franco's dictatorial band on this community's native language, Catalan, contributed to lack of published editions and scarce diffusion of this art song literature. It's a body of artwork that though marginalized, burgeons significantly in response to the social political oppression of the time. Although several local publishers have begun to recover the countless and significant musical works by neglected Catalan composers of the past century, the broader dissemination of their products can only flourish when the world acquires their music and chooses to interpret them by way of live performance and recording. Much work remains to be done to dismantle the barricades that have stood in the way of a deeper understanding of this body of music outside Catalonia. In just a few months, 
my wife, Russian-Israeli pianist, Oksana Glauchko, and I will be releasing our next collaborative recording titled Visca L'Amor, Long Live Love, featuring 21 rarely performed selections and one newly commissioned work, all written by 20th and 21st century Catalan composers. Our aim is to shed light on this nationalistic musical practice, its history, its style, and to provide a context for an understanding of the practice so that the genre of Catalan art song may continue to gain recognition. Here now, Oksana and I share three movements from a song cycle entitled La Rosa al Siavis, written by 20th century Catalonian composer Eduard Toldra, sung in Catalan. We hope you enjoy these pieces. Take good care and continue singing on your journey. Thank you. 
Fresca la barca, ma una della viga, fresca e pulina, con bacio un bene. Fresca la barca, fresca la barca, e grinata e varia, fate la bellanda con la preghietta. Oh, oh, oh. 